गुड इवनिंग पवन वी कैन स्टार्ट द स्लाइड ना is it visible sir uh, not yet yeah there no so uh, my warm welcome to all the uh, participants in this 72nd episode of thursday musings uh, pawan has muted everyone only the hosts and co-hosts can unmute themselves those who want to ask questions for the resource person they will have to type in the chat box and post their questions there so, uh, next slide please Oh, there are some bars coming on the slide. So uh, let me uh, introduce Professor Dr. Tofan Pati sir. He is from Katak. He is the chairman of this program. He is joining us shortly. He is in a flight. Uh, we usually skip each is the uh, our CVs. Uh, Dr. Amrit Pati Joshi, my good friend from Bhubaneswar. Next slide, please. and uh, the most useless person here i am dr am alim siddiqui next slide please so let me now welcome our esteemed chairpersons dr shubhangi r parkar ma'am she is from mumbai she did her dpm and md from mumbai university msc and phd from switzerland university of basel she is ex professor head of psychiatry department and former dean said gs medical college and kem hospital mumbai formerly professor and head of department of psychiatry former chief of drug addiction center of excellence former dean and academic dean gsmc and kem hospital parel mumbai former convener advanced course in medical education nodal center of mci contributed in area of suicide in world mental health report published by harvard university Uh, she has been awarded major awards of ips uh, such as marfatia award three times she is ex president of bombay psychiatric society and ips western zone branch she has guided students in their thesis uh, in maharashtra university uh, sndt and ignu she has started mental health helpline in mumbai in 2014 and helping the people solve their problems a lot of community mental health in uh, riots and uh, post blast cases conducted daily radio program for navi mumbai corporation during the lockdown period as marathi writer published books and many articles in various popular newspapers and magazines welcome ma'am our next chair person is dr suparna tilang she is a consultant psychiatrist ruby hall clinic pune and consultant in sexual medicine she insisted to have a very brief cv uh, welcome ma'am welcome to the uh, episode next slide please so so i now now, uh, now i hand over to the chair persons to introduce the speaker and the topic over to you ma'am please unmute yourself thank you dr alim dr tufan pati dr amrit i think it's a nice topic and i am not necessarily popular in sexual medicine maybe organizers thought i should learn something so i am here uh it it, it is a difficult female sexual expressions are difficult because they are mostly emotive uh, uh, mainly uh, women's uh, say uh, emotions are in her self her sex her relationship they are due to stress uh relational aspect you know sexual drive is because of biological hormonal drive chronic fatigue but i always feel that expression probably is uh, always along with um, uh, emotions i i remember um uh, you know few lines from the a very sensual film usso very popular film usso you know the sexuality probably for a woman is that man kyu behkare behka aadhi raat ko bela mehkare mehka aadhi raat ko so this is something which always comes and and it is a hard task to talk about it and talk about in a scientific way uh 
I, I, I don't uh, see much about uh, conceptual framework on uh, sexual dysfunctions, which probably is need to do in terms of uh, therapeutic uh, evaluation and interventions. And uh, we have got a great speaker, uh, uh, Master uh, T.S.S. Rao, uh, and a, a great sexual expert. And uh, here, uh, along with me, uh, chairperson is uh, Dr. Suparna, and uh, my great friend and uh, absolute expert in this field. I would like Suparna to introduce uh, my great friend, and a very popular person. I can see the number of participant increase like a you know uh, absolute um, nice way. So uh, maybe Dr. Suprina, uh, please introduce the great person, and uh, we would be listen to his lecture, uh, Dr. T. S. Sisrao. Sure. Thank you, uh, Shubangi. It's a pleasure to introduce Dr. TSS Rao, Professor, Psychiatry Department in JSS Medical College, JSS Ahir Mysore. Membership and fellowships, as you can see, they are in many. Honorary General Secretary, Indian Psychiatry Society, Editor General of Psychosexual Health, formerly President, Indian Association for Geriatric Mental Health, formerly editor, Indian Journal of Psychiatry, Secretary, Se Psychiatry and Human Sexuality Section, editor, chairman, publisher, uh, publishing uh, SSM affiliation to ISSM, president, Karnataka Sexual Sci Science Academy, won awards and orations, including Marpatiya, 14 of them, and books and publications, research and review papers, books and book chapters. After the introduction of Ms. Dr. S. 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 Rao, T. S. S. Rao, I have a small uh, um, comment to make about today's topic. This is an approach to uh, female sexual dysfunctions. They say that Sriyash Charitram Purushasya Bhagyam Devo Na Janati Kuto Manusha. Here, Charitra means personality and mind. There is a difference between Charitra and Charitra. So, one has to respect that when you talk about female sexuality, that women think about more about their self respect when you talk about sexuality of women. Till a long time, female sexual needs, dysfunctions, functions were very poorly understood. Now is a good time that we have started respecting and understanding more and more about it. And yet we see that very often when human sexuality is discussed and particularly about women, often it is taken as a, a with a viewpoint of making a joke out of it or disrespect out of it. So the first and foremost thing, when you approach a female sexual dysfunction, it is important that you approach it in a way where the self-respect of a woman is not disturbed or harmed. And I know Dr. Rao will do the best for it. Thank you and over to Dr. Rao. Thank you very, very much. One minute, I'll uh, share screen. Are you able to see the screen? Yes. Okay. Good evening. And uh, I'm really very lucky person today that uh, I got this opportunity to be part of uh, one of the very, very famous uh, program running for a long time. 
uh, Thursday musics. In fact, almost uh, Thursday means uh, everybody remembers this particular uh, uh, program. And I'm also very happy to see that almost nearing around 200 people are uh, online. That means it only speaks volumes about the interest in the topic. I'm also grateful to the chairpersons for the very nice words what they have spoken. So also the organizers who have given me this particular opportunity. More particularly, Dr. Tofan Patisab and uh, Alim and uh, Amrit for this wonderful opportunity that what they have provided. Welcome to Mysore and uh, Mysore is a nice place. You all must uh, visit once. And uh, this is one of the area we started working. And you may be wondering actually why this particular man is speaking about the women's problems. This is one uh, particular doubt many people must have got. It. I belong to the opposite sex. So I have all the right to know what this actually women are about. One point. There may be certain bias related to being husband. I have, every husband has a lot of complaints about their wives. So also my wife also has a lot of complaints about uh, me. According to her, she was very happy then she met me. And one more deadly statement what she makes sometimes is, uh, if you really loved me, you should have married somebody else. <laughs> you got the point. So that is one aspect. Psychiatry and sexology are very closely related and we are supposed to know both about men and uh, women. I enjoy being funny. That means uh, I have a lot of interest in women. So that may be one of the other reasons actually that. And uh, as Madam was telling, it is a learning process. I may be presenting few findings, but all said and done, it may be my perspectives. There may be a few issues uh, which people uh, may agree, may not agree, but what research says and what we actually try to do in our clinic, that's what actually I'm trying to going to present today. The second point, we have done quite a bit of work in the female sexuality. That means almost there are over three MD thesis were on uh, female sexuality. Almost around uh, 30 plus articles on uh, female sexuality. So as one of the things, a little bit of a write on that. And what I'll be doing today is actually a little bird's eye view of uh, what this female sexuality as I understand. So there may be almost always this is a worldwide bestseller, Everything Men Know About Women, the expanded and updated version with groundbreaking new findings. This is the 20th anniversary, by the way. You guys don't know anything. Nothing. <laughs> so this is about what actually men understand about uh, women. So 35 years of my married life, what she is, one point, and what I'm going to speak, still there is a lot of confusion. And whenever I have tried to understand, it is almost like a blind man trying to understand uh, elephant. The story of uh, blind people trying to understand it and uh, so many ways actually they interpret it. So this is one of the extremely important. When we try to look at, uh, I'm going to elaborate a little later as and as things go by, everything is same, except that little specific purposes what actually they are meant for. But all said and done, what works in case of men, it just doesn't work in case of women. So there has to be something special about it. That's what actually we are going to try to look at. What is that actually the commonality? What is that actually the difference? How we can bridge that? Female sexuality is one of the most neglected area as Dr. Supranamidam was telling, because for us, men come with some difficulty giving them pharmacologically some medicines actually takes care of. So also what we basically call, uh, if at all, there is a very limited number of people where the intensive therapy, what we can think about. And when we are trying to talk about women, issues are something actually literally different for the simple reason that what actually both the chairpersons were uh, talking about, the relationship and other related aspects occupy the whole significant aspect of their uh, life. I may be telling some things about uh, women, but uh, all said and done, there are exceptions there. In fact, you might have noticed that uh, DSM-5, you know, it has knocked off the whole issue related to the hypersexuality in case of women. There are a lot of explanations and reasons available why this particular thing has happened. For the simple reason that if something is happening, 
lot of interest is there, a lot of activity is there. It could be something abnormal. Actually, in fact, one has to look at it from that particular angle. It is secondary to something. So this whole uh, idea of what is precisely happening is something very interesting to know and understand what we are going to elaborate a little while uh, later. But all said and done, this particular slide, what I just wanted to convey the message is, whatever we are trying to tell, it is not going to apply to all women. Each woman is quite unique, highly individualized, the way only we have to look into the each of the problems. All said and done, there are a few common similarities what we will be trying to look into. Men no men are actually different. And uh, I am not going to elaborate on why men are so poor in so many aspects. We can uh, try to talk to in great detail. But all said and done, men are uh, very weak sex. And uh, very briefly to tell, see, if you try to look at women as one of the very, very strong sex they belong to. Any data, anywhere you can uh, try to look into. In fact, uh, it talks about women living for a much longer time. And why go back very early stages, sperms. Yes, sperm can survive for five to seven days. Why sperm can live only for 24 to 48 hours at best? 70% of the normal pregnancies are uh, what we basically call uh, female. 70% of the natural abortions are related to the male. What it means is that there is actually something inbuilt in the female sex that they actually they are very, very strong. <clears throat> what actually, what we were used to tell that they are highly emotional. This is one of the words actually one of the chairperson also used. We thought that they are weak because they are highly emotional, but now so science understands that it is one of the strongest point of the woman that they can handle stress much better fashion. The expression of emotional aspects is actually one which gives actually strength through them. And when we are trying to talk about uh, what we basically call uh, any of the aspects related to the many of the difficulties what actually God has provided. You talk about menstruation, you talk about bearing a baby, being, taking care of the children and uh, family. All of these things with aplomb they can carry on. And this is one of the things actually which uh, speaks about biologically, psychologically, socially, the women are a stronger sex. And if you try to look at, uh, there are a few things which are extremely same, uh, uh, common between both men and women. I guess the contraction 0.8 second, it applies to both man and woman. But to reach that point, there are a whole lot of issues involved actually. You talk about fetishes, you talk about pornography, you talk about sexual boredom. In fact, the so much Clarity is there as far as the men are concerned. Female passivity, extraordinarily well documented. And when you are trying to talk about drive, that the inhibited drive is one of the, the key component of the female uh, sexual functioning. What we mean by each of these term terminologies, we are going to look into. I made this presentation in a little different fashion in the sense that what we'll be trying to look at. In fact, my presentation will keep on emphasizing again and again that whatever type of problems what we are going to come across as far as the female sexuality is concerned, it is primarily applicable to what we basically call inhibited female sexual drive. That doesn't mean that they are in any way less, but what it means is there are so many things which occupy the sphere that sexuality becomes a small component of their life. So unless one looks into the relationship, unless somebody looks into the whole personality aspects, when somebody looks into whole adjustment issues, we will be missing out the whole uh, story. In case of man, you just give one PDFI inhibitor and uh, bring about erection is one of the easy things. But in case of woman, it is actually not so. What is it actually that makes difference? We are going to elaborate on uh, each of this. When we try to talk about male drive, it is actually testosterone dependent. What it means is there is a commonality between orgasm intercourse they are invariably interlinked, socially acceptable to enjoy, being lustful, want sex, upbringing actually permits, and men are basically, in fact, we are all well aware how actually they actually function. But when you try to look at female sex drive, it's a passive or, in fact, when you're trying to talk about estrogen and its all functionality, it is a receptive hormone. Intercourse and intense pleasures are not linked. For many, difficult to achieve orgasm because 
it needs a little more than what we basically call what is uh, stimulation wise less sexual frustration and uh, sentimentality romance these are all the type of issues predominantly primarily actually occupy the sphere of female sexuality traditional societies discourage anything about sexuality and this is actually carried forward for a long time and the duty then joys and pleasurable thing for many people in fact many of the times many of the families the problems are so many in fact all are attributable to men rather than to the women and influence of hormones time to time change which actually brings about so much difficult to understand anybody for example a simple menstrual cycle in a month so many changes happen at different different levels and each one actually requires a different way of understanding if you try to look at the life cycle of a woman in fact the changes are so many and uh, how precisely this can be understood in case of man it is very difficult to make this is one of the general diagram i just added to just indicate that when you are trying to talk about libido at any given particular point there is a wide difference between men and women in fact uh, we are going to talk about the developmental aspects the women actually uh, reach menarche much earlier two years puberty two years earlier than man but all sudden and the activity there is a wide difference at that particular level and we are all well aware in fact we talk in terms of marriage where woman is uh, much much younger than actually man it is actually one of the myth conceptions what actually people have that she is sensual only if she is very young and all that but all said and done one of the most ideal marriage is actually where the woman is 2 year or 4 years older than man because that's where actually the sexuality matches we'll come to that point a little while uh, later again to my ever loving wife during the last year i have attempted to make love to you 365 times i succeeded 36 times this average is once every 10 days and the following is a list of reasons why i did not succeed it's too hot 15 times it's too cold 3 times i'm too tired 19 times it's too late 16 times it's too early 9 times tending to sleep 35 times i'm not in the mood 21 times Mind my hair 28 times. Is that all do you think about? 83 times. So they have a lot of explanations to actually avoid uh, sex. And one commonality is actually that inhibited female uh, sexual drive. One or two small points which actually helps in making uh, what type of treatment we need to do how actually one should uh, proceed. See, this is one of the photographs taken in one of the newspapers, wherein the woman is always under lock and key. This exhibitionistic trait is very common in case of a uh, male. In fact, it almost looks like he is waiting to hoist his uh, flag. Whether you are talking about a lay person or you are talking about a celebrity, the same story that it is always under uh, lock and key. In fact, this is one of the very very typical. Uh, posture what actually has been uh, documented and even in animals this is actually the show always under lock and key unless relationship trust and lot many other things get into the picture it is is actually not likely to be the second point is actually the erogenous zones in case of man the things are very simple 
but in case of women they are a little different see what about any of the romantic situation women closing the eyes is one of the very typical story so why actually they close their eyes this may be one of the things actually one may be try to look into there is a whole lot of physiology to in fact psychological explanations available for this anything pleasurable to enjoy in fact this is one of the very typical story man keeps his eyes open woman closes her eyes you might have actually seen in many times situations this is because all the tissues which are erogenous in fact for which is necessary for stimulation is distributed far and wide in case of females unless she closes eyes and concentrates it is almost impossible for her to reach the peak or what we basically call the the level that is actually necessary of course men keep their eyes wide open because who is coming next they have to keep a watch on so this is one of the very typical story of uh, men and women one of the diagrams actually to depict very clearly in case of man all erogenous are concentrated focused at one particular point so any treatment methodology is extremely easy as far as man is concerned as far as the woman is concerned it is distributed far and wide so there is a lot of effort that is actually ab ye ladkiyon ka pleasure point kahan padega jis par jane ka hai na main bata dun yahan se bilkul seedha jaye idhar hi hai seedha aayega apni vagina nagar vagina nagar pe toll aayega udhar aise apna personality personality consent bin send date date lene ka uske baad aayega chhota labia gate wahan pe bahut sambhal ke chalane ka hai bahut shukriya phir fallopian flyover agar aage na to tu bahut aage nikal gaya hai to wahi pe gaadi maar ke thoda upar niche upar niche aage piche aage piche that's it that's spot right there right there keep going yes oh yes oh yes मतलब बारिश होगी आसपास कहीं भी कुछ करने का भी नहीं सिर्फ सोचो फुल घना कर There is a wide difference. This is what actually what we were trying to talk about, and this can be explained on the basis of uh, many things. One is actually the brain mechanisms, psychological and social aspects. The third one, the hormones. These are the three areas we definitely need to look into. And why I am going by this particular methodology of presentation is actually to make people understand why certain ways actually we have to proceed as far as the female sexual problems are. We are all well aware man's brain is bigger than actually woman's, but woman's brain though small it functions much better fashion in fact they use it much much better better way than anything else and people have made comments that in fact when he trains man thinks of sex rather than actually see forming and such other activity what could have been uh, thought of many families many times problem comes up not because of anything but women think that this fellow is wasting his time for uh, unnecessary things like that look at the brain in fact the man's brain is actually very typical in fact you talk about alarm system you talk about uh, pursuits you talk about territoriality you talk about pain and other related things and dopamine dominant in fact this is one of the very typical story of the man but all those things what we talk about cognitive empathy emotional empathy worry and related things anxiety lot many other things are in fact very very least developed as far as man is concerned this is one of the very typical story in fact many women feel tell that uh, you don't have any feelings you don't understand me in fact i wanted uh, some uh, banaras silk saree for my birthday this fellow can't understand anything actually what is happening you are waiting for him to understand and bring that banaras silk saree it is almost impossible what you have to do is actually tell him that i want banaras silk saree in fact the problem is solved waiting for the man to understand that you will understand your feelings you will empathize with you you will cognitively understand what is actually going on it is actually something very difficult and when we are trying to talk about emotion but every woman telling that man is uh, speak very less he doesn't express his feelings he doesn't discuss issues with me 
and he doesn't uh, share anything important aspects with me is one of the very very typical complaint by many women actually whether you are talking about the educated the elite urban ladies or uh, from the village that man doesn't speak he is in fact he is a man of a few words this is one of the extremely important common but women like to talk sir the kaisi lag rahi ho ha theek hi lag rahi ho acha pass kar do theek hai maine tumhe kaha hai apna phone chhod do jab tum mere sath ho na tum apna phone mat istemal kiya karo lekin tumne hamesha apna phone istemal karna hota jab main tumhare sath baithi hu ki main tab aa gayi hu self i i don't want you to use the phone theek hai it's all that Oh, Actually, men, just a minute. तो कटेगा मैडम पर मैं फोन पे बात नहीं कर रही थी मैडम आप काय को इतना बहस कर रहे हैं चलान कटेगा बस कटेगा मैंने सिर्फ अपने हसबेंड को कॉल लगाया था बस दैट्स इट बात नहीं कर रही थी मैं अरे कभी कह रही कॉल की थी कभी कह रही बात नहीं करी यार क्या फाइन दीजिए आप यार आप ऑफिसर हो आपको ये भी नहीं पता की बात करने का मतलब क्या होता है हम बात कर रहे हैं मैं भी बोल रही हूँ आप भी बोल रहे हो मैंने अपने हस्बैंड को कॉल लगाया था सिर्फ मैं बोल रही थी वो सिर्फ सुन रहा था बात नहीं कर रहे थे हम लोग दिस इज द स्टोरी इन फैक्ट मैन आर वेरी फ्यू वर्ड्स हार्डली दे स्पीक अबाउट वन पॉइंट एंड बेसिकली मैन आर हैंडीकैप्ड पीपल इफ यू ट्राई टू लुक एट विजुअल एक्टिविटी दैट आई वॉन्ट इलेबरेट टू मच एक्चुअली इन फैक्ट दे हैव ए वेरी लॉन्ग विजन ए वुमन हु इज नॉट मैरिड कमिंग एंड द वे मीन कैन पिक अप मच मोर देन a woman who is actually vision is very far in fact uh, she can pick up lot of issues very broad sweeping actually the vision hearing men's acuity is almost about 25 to 30% less than women and this is one of the reasons why many women actually when they tell the husband bring 10 items only one or two items only he is able to remember what one has to do is actually one should understand that he is actually an handicapped fellow and how best can be done in fact there are women actually who have ex- extremely well uh, manage their husbands in fact this lady wanted some vegetables and other things from the market beautifully she wrote it down and in fact this is the way you are actually handling a small baby as far as uh, many of this cognitive aspects are concerned men are very very poor they can't actually focus on uh, many things you look at women in fact all the things what we spoke about which is not that well developed you are talking about gut feelings i call my wife uh, lie detector machine even a little my changes in me actually she can pick up very easily queen of emotions breaks on amygdala large and mature and faster in case of a woman hypothalamus hormonal sympathy which actually interferes with in such a big fashion amygdala very poorly developed mummy brain extremely common in fact because of which in fact i sometimes uh, being a married man sometimes my wife would be like a romantic lover but many of the time she is like mother in law sometimes she is like mother sometimes she is like somebody else in fact she acquires so many personalities very difficult to actually to understand and uh, manage so more than anything else there is something called as worry what extremely well developed feeling guilty 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 for 100 things see when we are trying to talk about later i will uh, present one uh, slide in the clinics of north america which uh, came up extremely understand easy to understand man can close eyes and imagine 100 girls women with without much difficulty he doesn't feel guilty also but a woman you tell him actually tell her actually to fantasize she will fantasize the same man wearing maybe lungi wearing pant wearing shorts or wearing uh, jubba you got the point she can't get aroused with the looking at the same hopeless fellow who is there in the house this is what beside by chance she imagines or something fantasizes she feels guilty gets into temple goes into puja room and uh, takes bath and hundred other things she will do because she has done a mistake this is one of the very very strong cultural feeling feeling guilty and this actually acts like one of the most important part and feeling guilty is uh, one aspect of it and whatever is there there are two aspects which we should remember when we are trying to talk about uh, certain areas one is uh, remembering small small things and talking about it much longer time that is one aspect of it that's what we basically call in fact that where i have a colleague whose wife doesn't wear the same sari for two functions that means for each function he has to buy one new new sari in fact they have picked up mother in law and daughter in law wearing the same sari actually in fact only women can do this type of uh, they remember even small things for much much longer time 
they never forget fight romantic encounter and tender moment very recently i had a lady who was complaining that pain in the neck what happened sometime uh, 20 years ago after marriage third day or fourth day there was a small fight and he had hit her near the neck 20 years later she complains about the same spot where actually the pain is felt but more than anything else they won't allow you to forget us i'll give you a small example i married and uh, one of the things was uh, that murtam sari was not good she was talking about 3 months later 6 months later 2 years later 20 years later sometime back when all the sarees were given off in the uh, one of the ashrams i was thinking everything is fine and now i am very happy person sometime when i later opened the almira the saree was still there i asked her actually why is this saree still there her comment was very simple in fact uh, comment was that uh, to remind you now you got the point they record small things and continue to talk about it for such a long time that which actually puts off lot of men so this being memory in fact people talk about uh, the bindi what the way is almost like a camera which records and keeps it stores it for such a long time that it almost becomes difficult all good things they may forget very fast all bad things they'll remember it for such strong way and remember recollect and uh, store it in such a big way many people think that sex is actually like uh, it is screwing in fact that's one of the terminology nut and bolt phenomenon that's what actually the men think about but you look at various hormones which are there testosterone marlon brando type or uh, except for prolactin in case of men there is hardly much major, major uh, this thing actually like but when you try to look at uh, women the estrogen serotonin progesterone all of these type of things are actually the inhibitors of uh, what we basically call anything what we call adventurism if you are trying to add <clears throat> this is one of the reasons in fact later when we try to look at see let us come to the four important things initially we talk about estrogen progesterone and uh, testosterone but now we talk about oxytocin oxytocin is one of the extremely important hormone now documented and for the female orgasm this is actually absolutely necessary also what is that necessary in fact how it actually operates in fact one of the things even if a woman shows interest in the opposite sex or late hours she has entered the hostel through in window these are all testosterone dependent activities whatever little is there it can be doing wonderful job in that particular fashion but when you are trying to talk about oxytocin this is one of the key hormone which actually absolutely necessary for bonding it glues in fact the two people multifaceted role in case of attraction touch mating sex orgasm bonding labor parenting nursing you talk about anything and ultimately even for the orgasm the necessity of it what we if we try to look at little more in fact the initial rush of oxytocin which actually gives that electric sensation type for any new encounters what we talk about you are driving you are in a car or you are traveling in a public bus and some nice beautiful lady came and sat and that touch is giving that electric feeling that means you are still young at heart if it is not means there is something actually problem is happening but then lot of women complain about uh, everything was so fine earlier when we were uh, going around but now married so much of problem just about few minutes back i had a phone call from somebody in from jaipur um, telling that in fact uh, the whole issue I, we were quietly romantically involved for 7 years 3 years very actively but then i am not able to perform at all for the last 2 years since the time of marriage this is because the oxytocin effect you hold the hand and go for seven feras and in the end of it actually because of the tolerance the whole sensation goes off unless a new person comes there it is almost impossible for anybody to actually to in fact one of the most important thing for the woman is how actually to increase dopamine how actually to modify in fact uh, functioning of uh, serotonin how actually to enhance endorphin levels how actually in fact oxytocin level each of these type of things many of the times leaving the job and staying back or going for two jobs and which is actually the stress that is actually producing lot many things in fact more confident a woman more likely she will enjoy sex less likely in fact wherever the problems are there or her infertility complex to talk about or a whole lot of things where pleasure is not there 
that can lead to quite a bit of uh, difficulties. I'll come to that particular point a later. And how actually a relationship can be maintained? Treat your wife like girlfriend. In fact, this is one of the things advice we always give for uh, men who come for therapy because one has to sustain. How precisely it can be done, we'll come another one or two minutes later. Developmental issues. In fact, when we try to look at, we all started uh, basically like both men and women and uh, similar fashion. We all started as women only. If there's a fusion, if there is actually change, that's what actually which brought about uh, the whole lot of difference. And when you try to look at, uh, developmentally speaking, the woman starts off her life with something missing. What Freud call, basically called as uh, Electra complex, that something I'm missing, I want to have it, and lot many other things. There are a whole lot of psychological theories. This is not the time for me to elaborate on uh, those things. But the important point is actually, somewhere when you are trying to talk about adolescence, there's a wide difference between boys and the girls. This is what Kinsey, almost uh, <clears throat> around 50s, he spoke about, there is a difference between men and women. And even today, in fact, this particular findings has not been uh, altered or modified at all. Either. Boys mature a little later, but all said and done, the sexual interest and activity is much, much higher in case of a male sex. Going about, running around and trying to catch fish. In fact, this is one of the extremely important uh, aspects attributed to the boys. Though culturally speaking, some changes are happening, but all said and done, this is one of the very common typical story. But somewhere around the 40s, 50s, something really magically things happen. What is that? Around 40s and 50s, all inhibitory female hormones are coming down and her interest in sexual activity increases significantly. As far as man is concerned, one is age, other one is metabolic disorders, other one is actually the alcohol, drugs, and so many other things. In fact, it is actually a downhill course. Ultimately, this may be one of the reasons couples seeking divorce after many years of life is one of the very typical story what we have uh, seen. Not because of anything, that sexuality may be one of the key important uh, component actually there. Coming to behavioral issues, what precisely happens as far as the female circles. They are multitaskers. We straight away agree with that. But that may be one of the problems because she's put under a lot of stress. So sex becomes one of the one small minuscule aspect of her whole uh, life. Burdened with so many things actually. One of the deep important point what we always suggest in therapy is actually how one can uh, free her. But I have uh, work in Mysore, Bangalore, people who are from the IT and all, they come. She goes in the morning, comes back in the evening, morning, early morning, she has to wake up, prepare the breakfast and all of that. Earning in terms of lakhs, but mother-in-law says, I don't want to have the maid. So many problems. In fact, the whole problem could have been solved by just having one maid who can work out uh, breakfast in the morning and uh, night the food is prepared. In fact, this may be the and only the answer that may be necessary for a person to actually to, but unfortunately that doesn't happen. Second, the low intimacy and sensuality, they take the whole of the picture actually as far as the women are concerned. Emotions, love, in fact, this is actually the dominant the picture. Love first, sex next is one of the very typical story in the woman's sex. And that's what actually the Levine mentioned. In fact, Levine is also credited the desire problems are the maximum what we encounter in the society, not ED or PE or other things. It is actually the desire disorders which are actually the dominant picture. The seventh component what he mentioned is extremely important. This is what actually the emotional satisfaction, the personal reflection, which is actually missing as far as the female's sexual activity is concerned that emotional satisfaction, because it is lacking, this acts like an inhibitory, this thing, and subsequently what we see, very significant lowering of uh, the whole process involved in as far as sexual activity is concerned. So desire, when we are trying to talk about it as a biological component, psychological component, and social component, all these three things are actually extremely important. And when we are trying to talk about intimacy, in fact, women actually give so much of emphasis on that compared to the men. Attachment style, family dynamic, sexual identity issues, self-esteem. In fact, all of these things are extremely important for a woman, which actually is, speaks uh, volumes about why how she goes through the difficulty. And when we are trying to talk about uh, therapy, woman, if she is happy with the partner, in fact, the, the treatment is much, much more easier than many women who think that they are uh, stuck with somebody whom they didn't like. Many of the times, very early age, marriage conducted and then subsequently doesn't match 
either the taste or a lot of things. In fact, these are the difficult uh, family issues what actually one need to. Sensuality. In fact, the use of senses and stimulation extremely common in case of man. Many women complain. In fact, I still remember when I was doing PG in uh, Nimhans, one of the senior person came and uh, told one of the senior uh, PG, see your husband while coming home, uh, coming to the, uh, going home, he was looking at all the girls on the road. Her comment was very simple. She told, more hungry, that much better. Now you got the point? But many women actually, in fact, feel upset that he's looking at other women. In fact, this is one of the very typical story. And uh, more and more, actually, you try to restrain him. More and more, actually, you are trying to land up with the difficulty. Taking bath. In fact, a whole lot of things. I still remember one of the cases where uh, husband was commenting that I want my wife to take bath every day, dress up nicely, what she was doing earlier, and uh, makeup and other things. What she was nowadays, she's not doing any of those type of things. I'm not getting interest. When this particular issue came in one of the combined therapy session, her comment was very simple. Sir, please tell him that uh, I am his wife, not his girlfriend. Many women, once married, once have children, in fact, they feel that it is actually the life settled and no more. In fact, they need to attend to their, uh, <clears throat> what we call, personal issues, the way they were actually attending early. So this can lead to a whole lot of difficulty in many of the times. This may not induce... Uh, intercourse and all of that, but to that arousal which to aspect when you are trying to talk about, extremely important component. And sexual response cycle. There's a wide difference between how actually the women's the thing actually functions. We are all well aware, man is very fast on the trigger. Women, in fact, three means is three, takes a lot of time to heat up and you remove the plug, still it is very hot. Men are uh, hopeless as far as a whole lot of things are concerned, but when it comes to sex, in fact, there are candescent bulbs. You put the switch on, immediately it is on actually like what we talk about. Two phases, four phases, we are all well aware of. And we are all aware also that uh, there is a refractory period in case of man. But as far as the women are concerned, it takes a lot of time. They can be multi-orgasmic according to Marston and Johnson's. But what actually subsequent studies have documented is they may not experience orgasm at all like that. Even all these permutation combinations are possible when you are trying to talk about women. And this is one of the things actually which came out as far as DSM-5 is concerned. Female sexual interest and arousal disorder instead of desire, arousal, orgasm, and things like that, what we used to classify earlier. Because we really don't know when is actually the interest desire component, when is actually the arousal component. This is very difficult as far as the females are concerned. Genitopelvic pain and penetration disorder because if there is any problem in the, any of these earlier areas, subsequently it becomes a problem. Many men, in fact, enter, finish, and uh, uh, bam, bam, thank you, madam, that type of an attitude, not going to make, to actually make women happy about it. Sexual aversion they disorder, they have removed it. Hypersexual disorder, they have removed it. Again, this which point I had mentioned in the beginning itself. What I am trying to tell is, what physiological changes, what Master Johnson mentioned, it was purely physiological. But women's whole life is actually something psychological or emotional. And that's what actually David Reed's uh, erotic stimulus pathway, he talked about beautiful seduction, sensations, surrender, reflection. And these are all beautiful terminologies, poetic still, but all said and done, this speaks up. And you look at the cycle. Man's is very simple, straightforward. But as far as the uh, Basin um, brought very clearly in his one of the terms, there are multiple levels where the things can get stuck. Emotional, physical satisfaction, spontaneous sexual drive and hunger limited, emotional intimacy, many of these type of things, in fact, not possible everywhere, every time. So this is where actually, in fact, it puts off a woman much, much easier way than actually, in fact, one can think of. How would you like if someone turned you on and then left? That's why many women actually suffer like that because stimulation, but then not being completed is one of the very common story. And we are also well aware for the man, Getting erection and getting ejaculation is an extremely easy job, but as far as the woman is concerned, there are 100 things are necessary to keep her happy and uh, proceed, which actually many men find it difficult. This is one of the extremely important diagram from uh, National Racing Clinics of North America. With fantasy alone, worldwide study, the meta-analytic component, what actually they documented, women, there's very, very few people who reach arousal actually to a significant extent. 
with the thrusting alone with intercourse only about uh, 29 30% of the women and what we basically talk about uh, masturbation significant number with vibrator stimulation almost 80 to 90% of the women can be taken to the orgasm and anything else in fact if we can try to talk about that touch is one of the the important component as far as the woman's stimulation is concerned in fact a woman in fact if you are trying to talk about uh, sexual stimulation it is the touch touch and touch alone in fact i can emphasize again and again for the simple reason that without this it is just not possible i can tell you one small story i was traveling once a very late flight from kolkata to bangalore this uh, bengali fellows are little talkative fellows one fellow was sitting in the front row he was pressing that button for the ear hostess to come his english was also not that good but when she came I am uh, fingering and fingering, but you are not coming. But I can add, with fingering alone, nobody will come. In fact, they need much more than that, what we precisely call. So with vibrator, almost 100% actually possible like that. And pre-orgasmic, now we don't talk about frigidity and uh, anorgasmia and things like that. It is actually pre-orgasmic state. If a proper partner is available, if proper environment is provided, with proper stimulation is added, every woman it is possible to be taken to the orgasmic level. So the terminology now we use is actually what we call as the pre-orgasmic. So ultimately when you are trying to talk about inhibited female orgasm and various things like that, it is actually training the woman in masturbation. That capacity to train and understand her body, what actually stimulates. In fact, this is the whole process involved in that uh, particular thing. When we did a study on about 500 plus women who were educated and uh, staying with the husband at least one year, <clears throat> I didn't initiate don't think about sex. I never uh, carried forward many of the things. And when you are trying to talk about masturbation, around 32% of the women reported yes, but only about 11% were reasonably comfortable. You can imagine many women in our country, they don't even know what is actually orgasm, what is actually the pleasure, what is actually their body. In fact, in the movie, people are now actually the changing. That's what actually we are seeing. And uh, Okay, now let us look into these are all few basic things about uh, female sexuality. Extremely common. Unless you look into that, you don't uh, see that. If somebody comes and tells, in fact, half of the female population, in psychiatry we have spoken about, you add one drug, this drug or that drug, in fact, it becomes the double. Extremely common problem. Who presents, how present, when they present, all of these type of things are extremely easy to make out in, in a clinical practice. Being married to a gynecologist, I very easily understand how precisely the things will uh, happen. Many of the times they will present for 100 different things except for actually what we talk about. Chronic fatigue, host of minor discomforts, insist on repeated evaluations, dramatic intensity of symptoms, progressively seductive behavior, relief from diagnostic procedures, in fact, colonoscopy, endoscopy, in fact, repeatedly, in fact, asking for that. Unable to relax during exam, emphasizes emotional cause, unwilling to consider, consider emotional cause, dependence on injection tonic. All of these things indicate that this lady is not serviced properly. And in fact, when we are trying to talk about um, issues, depression and lot many other things may be extremely common associated condition. One should almost always keep it in mind. Whether male should handle this female problems or female should handle male problems. In fact, uh, female therapists only should handle female problems. In fact, that particular anxiety has been now actually left out completely. There are a few more other areas actually one can uh, talk about, but all said and done, what we talk about men, that they are a lot of misconceptions. They feel that it's almost like hoisting the machine at the required time they fail. The same story applies to many of the women too. Couple versus uh, individual. Advantages, you must almost always give privacy and talk to the individual separately. This is one of the things. You want to know about Satnar and Rao, you must talk to Vasumati separately. In fact, this is as simple as that. In presence of the partner, what they actually say is something totally different from what actually precisely they Domestic violence, substance abuse, intent to leave relationship, infidelities, individual psychopathology. There are a lot of such issues are there where in fact it is almost impossible, however close the person to open up and uh, talk about. So these are a few of the things actually one should almost uh, keep it in mind. Do remember whether we are dealing with the dysfunctions or the emotional problems, relational problems. 
if something with arousal and orgasm in fact this could be a dysfunction but many of the times sometimes yes possible sometimes not possible sometimes possible with one partner with not possible with another partner and lot many other things are there they are all relational problems so relational problems cannot be handled like a what we call sexual dysfunction many women in fact they have got so much frustrated with the male partner that this is one of the extremely common story even among the very educated many things like partner chooses inconvenient time inability to relax disinterest attraction to the same sex individual turned off for so many reasons i still remember a lady was telling that uh, i don't like this fellow chewing the pan but this man was telling i can leave her but not uh, willing to leave the pan chewing habit no you got the point it could be as simple as that there are a lot of you interviewing tips available how to go about never assume that people understand what the words mean common terms mean different things to different people use chart and diagrams and avoid jargon as much as possible my asthma they said they'd fix it but it didn't make any difference at all well some doctors make mistakes your inhaler all the time go through one a week you right do i look like an idiot no your inhaler works so you must be very very clear about what actually you are trying to do very big be, be, be clear what has to be taken orally what has to be introduced in the vagina in fact these are all extremely important and as far as uh, female sexual dysfunction we are talking about history history and history in fact this is the only thing actually which is absolutely necessary when you are trying to talk about evaluation <clears throat> you give them the opportunity in fact in fact they speak about <clears throat> so many issues without much difficulty at all at that and when we ask our post graduate students also work up a case for a libido change for a depression one or two small points only what actually they try to collect it is not going to work it has to be something like multiple histories that is absolutely necessary for a proper evaluation go from least anxiety to the what you call anxiety generating level collect information from the childhood adolescence adult sexuality and each of this area duration circumstances description sex response cycle partner's sexual response cycle how actually each one understands and interprets actually this one patient and partner's reaction to each of these type of difficulties and motivation for treatment that means then history has to be very elaborate one and has to cover all these things and when you are trying to talk about therapy sexual response not feeling good about one's own or partners it is not for uh, bringing about remarkable changes in many of the things but how actually one can be lovingly intimacy and all can be enhanced is actually one of the whole purposes teachers showing love by meaningful and pleasurable sexual expression success unlikely if relationship is in the problem unless you tackle the relationship it is almost not possible our problem of psychopathology in partner unless you tackle that it is almost not possible vested interest to remain dysfunctional own our partner you are likely to fail and for those adjusted to dysfunction do not impose sex therapy these are a few of the very common important important points what we definitely have to understand before we consider what we basically call how to go about as far as the sex therapy is concerned for the guidelines for couple therapy in fact ruling out organic problems and comorbidities establishing ground rules being an intimate team <clears throat> that means both husband and wife for one single unit see if a husband can perform once a month and she is happy with that there is no problem at all she wants it every day and husband can perform once a month there is a problem so it is actually an unit problem focus on education reduce performance anxiety by prescribing sex and this has to come from you focus on comfort pleasure and eroticism sexual intimacy skill building non demanding exercises and all what we talk about psychologically sophisticated or not extremely important for any therapy to be done and one of the things we are all well aware there are many problems which can be sufficiently handled by just permission giving limited information and specific suggestions only a small percentage which need what we basically call intensive therapy i have a particular way of uh, dealing with these things ignorance by education cultural taboos and myths by permission giving 
poor communications by teaching communication skills and sexual failure leading to or fear of failure and whole lot of things actually how one goes about this is one of the important point so evaluating in fact if you have a consultant available from gynecology point of view endocrinologist all these type of things are extremely important there are very few limited tests available as far as um, females are concerned there are multiple scales available to understand what precisely happening in case of uh, females and one of the very detailed assessment scales for sexual disorders a review by dr sandeep grover in uh, journal of psychosexual health you must read extremely well uh, written and a uh, lot of elaborate in information available for many of the scales in that area when you are trying to talk about hypoactive sexual desire this is part of interest in uh, what we call arousal in fact one important point you have to keep it in mind is actually there should be something actually which is affecting the desire component that need to be set right look into what all the areas but some common general guidelines for couple therapy is that communicate clearly differentiate between an invitation and demand try to let sex simmer on low <clears throat> rejecting an activity not rejecting a person they employ the art of compromise avoid counting love making if not interested at the moment but one might later on convey this clearly they expand sexual repertoire use sexual fantasies identify obstacles and practical ways to overcome these are a few of the important things actually we try to talk about aversion disorder it is almost now put in as phobic section in case of dsm system extremely important we have tried and uh, along with the drugs behavior therapy lasting for almost 3 months to 4 months in fact we have succeeded i'll later tell you later when if time if anybody raises the question on that orgasmic disorder now we talk about pre orgasmic state rather than actually orgasmic difficulty in case of women <clears throat> there are multiple ways primary secondary continuously present or situational it is many men think that in fact arousal is can be something which can be done by almost like a pressing on the computer many of the times the software other related uh, well educated individuals problem is not because of anything he presses the button and it is functioning same fashion he wants women to function it is almost impossible to do that way and the computer laptops mobiles in fact they are interfering with our intimacy matters in such a big way how actually can be corrected when cure is the cuddle in fact one of the important point is when you are trying to talk about uh, women intensive therapy means it is almost sensate focus exercises sensate focus without genital contact with the genital contact mutual with the genital contact and time sensitive caresses vaginal containment and vaginal containment with movement it is one of the very elaborate uh, this thing and uh, maybe on 19th telangana state uh, midterm cme is talking about sensate focus i'll be elaborating on and those people who want in fact please join for that particular program when you are trying to talk about drugs there are very limited number of drugs as far as the female sexuality is concerned flibanserin i have not used it but all said and done the data available is not really much actually to speak about so there are multiple side effects and other things people have spoken about hormone replacement therapy in fact extremely important particularly when you are trying to talk about pain and penetration disorders correcting it is you know the very very important aspect replacing estrogen and uh, other related things extremely important use of androgen can bring about significant changes where necessary the red dilators and the vibrators in fact definitely one can actually make use of pd5 inhibitors doesn't work in case of a female according to the much available literature but all said and done we have some exceptional cases where certain different way the report has been available if later somebody raises the question i'll try to talk about it flibanserin in approval of a controversial drug for a controversial disorder what we had uh, written so the carry home message when you are trying to talk about the management of female sexual dysfunction it is a multifactorial issue social psychological and physical multifaceted desire arousal pelvic pain orgasm and the related aspects couple therapy and pharmacological and non pharmacological treatments all of these things in fact has to be combined when you are trying to talk about non pharmacological bring about lifestyle changes in fact focus on that particular area to a great extent <clears throat> many of the times in many houses privacy is just not there in fact sometimes they only a screen separating in a single big hall people are sleeping and lot many things men can somehow get the erection and complete that process but it won't work that particular way as far as women are concerned sex therapy and couple therapy were necessary in great detail lubricant and moisturizers were necessary 
pelvic physiotherapy were absolutely necessary. Body and the lifestyle changes, including doing exercise and other related things, in fact, one has to incorporate. More than anything else, the freedom that is available and the leisure component, in fact, these two extremely important points and the confidence and other related things which make difference as well as the female sexuality is concerned. Treating sexual problems, some messages one has to carry. Dysfunction cannot be treated in isolation. Individuals seen in the context of relationship. A biopsychosocial model works. Helping couple function optimally it should be our aim. Basic information on anatomy physiology need to be provided. Eliminating myths and false expectations. Removing performance anxiety. Individualized treatment for couples. These are the few things. In fact, we have plenty of literature available on relationship matters and intimacy matters. These are the few books available, soft copy available. If somebody can uh, write, we can provide and clinical practice guidelines from Indian Psychiatric Society available at the website. Very easily one can actually download and uh, have it. With these few words, let me just close it and depending upon the type of questions that come up, let me try to explain in detail how we go about uh, each of these cases. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you so much for such a wonderful presentation. Uh, I'd like, uh, I now invite the chairpersons for their opening remarks. After that, we can take the questions from the chat box. Myself and Amrit. Yes. Uh, I think it, it is a very comprehensive, very focused lecture. And right from the brain to intimacy, to hormones, to a delicate balance between the hormones, uh, Dr. T.S. Rao, really, we congratulate you. Uh, it, it is a very soothing, beautiful lecture, and so many uh, uh, issues have been highlighted because women not knowing better suffer in silence, you know, basically, and uh, making her understand all these things are very important. But if uh, Alin permits, you know, I mean, I, I have a question, you know, and that is uh, uh, T.S. is a is, uh, uh, I mean, don't you think, I feel it is a law, you know, strong medicalization of uh, female sexual dysfunction. What do you think about it? Absolutely. So the thing is, the doctors are very comfortable about uh, writing medicines. See, many of the things what we spoke about, sensitive focus or psychotherapy or other behavior therapeutic techniques, all of them uh, need time, training, and uh, many of us are not equipped for those things. So writing some medication is one of the easiest way and uh, that's what we are doing for so many disorders. And female is difficult to understand is one of the easy way out. That's what precisely happened. This is one of the reasons, see, for example, fibrancerin, there are four uh, uh, streams of uh, evaluation that happened. If it is not working for eight weeks, there is no meaning in actually continuing this particular medication. That means... Majority of the individuals need the psychotherapeutic techniques rather than actually the drugs. This is what actually another message. Yeah. Very, very delicate subject, very nicely handled. Yes, Supreda. I have something to ask, can I? Please, please, madam. Oh, well, I have been listening to you very well presented. But then two things I need to question again out of what you spoke is you've always uh, uh, talked about drive one, drive two, drive three, whatever the drives are, don't you think it all depends on the desire which takes you through the drive and how do you improve the desire? Because desire is the most difficult thing to instill into anybody, maybe with sensitive focus, maybe with behavior therapy, whatever it could be. But how do you generate desire? The, the, the whole issue as far as the female sexuality is concerned. One is uh, uh, second one is concerning what we basically call uh, the partner. Many of the times, uh, unless she feels comfortable, she feels confident, she feels that she is wanted, she feels the trust and relationship issues uh, settled. In fact, it is almost, uh, see, many of the times what happens, she is a multitasker. 
at the peak of even uh, orgasm she is worried about uh, whether the curd has set or the the child's bag is ready for tomorrow class no you got the point they are so much concerned about uh, many of the things and when we are trying to talk about the drive see this is one of the things uh, used very equivalent terminologies many are there say for example the need the impulse and many other things actually in fact equivalent way actually people have used in that particular broader sense only i have used that particular word drive primarily when we try to look at man and woman this is one that inhibited is one of the the key component uh, that actually that comes out so to enhance it there are a lot of things are necessary one is something biological something psychological something social all these three things are necessary i have a i have a question again on the same point is drive is something which can be brought about by biological factors or change in drive can be done by some amount of but the desire doesn't come desire has to come from within desire has to come from the own learning and fantasy about the act fantasy about the partner and very often like men talk about women and uh, even they criticize their wives the amount they do that women never do that even if they hate their husband sitting with their friend they will always say that no i have a very good husband very rarely they will criticize the husband but when they hear the men criticizing any woman any woman they develop an aversion for men in general and that also affects and no matter how much of sensitive focus you give them they are not going to build that confidence about a male factor in their life in fact very well taken and uh, i fully agree with that that's one of the reasons why the female sexual problem cannot be taken as a female sexual problem alone majority of the situations it is a relationship problem say another thing that you used a word that means a woman is not serviced properly well she is not a machine to be serviced okay. and this is where men think that women can be serviced women cannot be they are as human as you people are i'm sorry i'm being a little personal in all this but what i mean by you is a male factor in doctor third and important thing when you are asking a question when you are asking a question about such a delicate thing to a woman no matter how much history you take if the tone what i just now contradicted with your use of words then women will never truly open up in fact we don't tell all these things to women what we no, are no, i'm not saying you say all these things was, the message you are trying to convey yes that uh, there is one issue that need to be kept in mind when yes are, uh, not know, only but, because you may not say this to a woman in a, 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 a specification but when men i'm not talking about a doctor i'm talking about men when they discuss in this fashion many women have already developed a disrespect for men that's what i'm saying absolutely well done thank you another point there are women who have clitoral orgasm but don't get vaginal orgasm what solution would you give them in fact this idea that uh, what freud uh, this thing marshall and johnson's mentioned earlier that vaginal orgasm clitoral orgasm now we don't agree with those particular points no no, no 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 it is still a point it is still no, no, a point the, i the recently is actually had one a... of the key component which is necessary for arousal in fact in fact it's it, not uh, only about g it is about the habit of masturbation that a girl has grown up if a woman is happy with the masturbation she has a clitoral orgasm if a woman is not addicted to masturbation she may get orgasm by vaginal way so how do you change that now uh, 
see i can now provide a lot of information on this uh, particular area earlier we used to talk about vaginal and clitoral as uh, something very different now we don't separate in this particular fashion ultimately when we try to look at one of the the most important the thing is actually the g spot stimulation the clitoris which is the very small organ but almost the equal nerve endings what is actually found in case of penis that is being present so each person may have a different ways of actually reaching orgasm how actually one is able to trace it out how actually somebody experiences it and how actually it is actually reinforced subsequently it all uh, depends orgasm is actually something what happens between the ears somewhere inside the brain the whole process the earlier what we used to talk about there is something changes actually happen in the body and in the genital area reproductive area is something aspect what we have observed as a physiology but orgasm is experienced in case of a brain and it is a sensation which uh, a woman experiences so the clitoris vagina these are not earlier we used to talk about each of these things in a very big way but now we don't talk about each of these things in a separate fashion i fully agree that it is between the ears and not between the thighs but yes it is between the ears how the girl has been or a woman has got trained herself so to change what is there between the ears is itself a very difficult thing it is that in fact of course there are, there there are so many such fineries as far as the female sexual dysfunction is concerned that i think it is so difficult to uh, put it in a broad uh, perspective it's very tailor made for every woman in fact in fact one can speak for many hours on this particular topic yes, very true. then you are trying very to true, very true very true i fully agree possible. with you but very well put in short thank you thank you ma'am somebody has raised the hand and like omar uh, abdir abdul rahman ali alim ji yeah should i unmute you hmm. yes yeah please please be, uh, ask a question thank you uh, i am very excited to participate in this session i am so happy i am from somalia so omar uh, abdul rahman uh, i ask you this question uh, there is a culture in east africa and uh, some country of islam those are a uh, female genital mutilation there is a part of the female dysfunction please sir if you have any concern oh, please yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay eh? Eh? F- female genital mutilation fgm yes yes in fact this is one of the very important uh, aspect now we say that uh, that should not be indulged but all said and done one of the most important organ as dr superna madam was talking about clitoris and this is one of the key organ apart from g spot what we talk about is necessary for the female arousal reaching orgasm and all of that mutilation of this particular part is actually almost like denerving the whole uh, area and uh, a woman may find it very difficult this is actually very barbaric one should uh, very precisely in fact uh, uh, almost all countries have banned it for all practical purposes very well taken yeah uh, sir there are many questions in the chat box i think we should take them now Uh, first question is from mahjubin how to differentiate between asexuality and low sexual desire ah uh, see the uh, one is of course as the terminology itself uh, indicates something low or something absent but as far as the female sexuality is concerned many of the times many people for many reasons they try to avoid sex it is almost like starting from giving punishment to the husband to actually to set right certain things but all the things happen till night and then we are very happy what people say about it too husbands when some problem happen between partners each of them staying separately not staying together and trying to avoid and all of that and when you are trying to talk about yes sexuality the masturbation and the related activities we are not trying to bring in that when we are trying to talk about is actually the relationship issues this is taken sometimes in a very extreme fashion also the many husbands when some problem develops rather than solving the problem take the wife to the her mother's house and uh, leave it there where the problem is not going to get solved in that particular fashion 
सर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम नीलेश सूर्यवंशी एनी एनी रो इफ एनी फिजिकल एग्जामिनेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड देन हाउ डू वी प्रोसीड प्लीज गाइड ओके द इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट इज एक्चुअली एज अ मेल एग्जामिनिंग अ फीमेल पेशेंट अलॉन इज एक्चुअली नॉट परमिसिबल एट ऑल एक्चुअली इनफैक्ट होल इश्यूज आर देर in fact one of the best thing what actually psychiatrists are doing is actually marrying gynecologists in fact almost about 20% of the psychiatrists have married gynecologists this is what actually i have uh, done a very brief uh, analysis so take the help of one of the consultant extremely important so basically team has to be there uh, then there is a question on treatment of post menopausal hypoarousal in females from talha many of the times menopausal and uh, post menopausal woman is highly arousable very active extremely important uh, to mm-hmm. note a particular point but it acts like a low not because of anything but because of the psychological social and cultural aspects many women have been ingrained with an idea that uh, once reaching menopause means it is the end of the sexual life now no more it is necessary the reproduction is actually one of the key component that we have actually achieved and now grown up children are there whether pri- see many of the times what precisely happens uh, there are two bedroom house means uh, one son and one daughter or maybe two sons they occupy that particular this buddha buddhi are thrown out actually out of the privacy and they are uh, put in the hall see, see these are all extremely important component one should be well aware of low not because of anything but because of the psycho socio cultural aspects which that need to be corrected in the therapy okay and there, there, uh, there is a question on uh, what are the various scales used you showed a slide they want uh, oh, the, the, the time it may take lot of time there are uh, around uh, 10 very commonly used scales from female dysfunction point of view and uh, i very strongly recommend that this is a very easily downloadable uh, article from journal of psychosexual health please uh, let them visit the ssh uh, anybody can download and very beautifully it is done okay so and what, 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 what is actually being in fact when we are trying to talk about scales there are different different per, uh, scales available for different purposes so so, so dr tesh rao is actually the editor of journal of psychosexual health you visit the website and there they can get the scales am i right sir yes yes very easily available sure so you search on google and you'll reach there it is freely downloadable uh, then there is a question on uh, why rj would it be better for a relationship if women were to talk less <laughs> this, uh, this is one of the extreme in fact when people uh, ask me to present a little more in fact sometimes we have conducted programs for 6 uh, hours 8 hours and all like that the time we speak quite a bit uh, see some of us speak in fact in my house i have sneezed loudly 30 years ago you got the point at the time of marriage okay then there is a serious question from akshay garg is there something like female dhat exists there are cases in gynae where vaginal discharges that are resistant to treatment and patient keep complaining them for years absolutely absolutely in fact psychiatric mm-hmm. syndrome is another area where we have done quite a bit of work and uh, we have some published publications related to that the amulya from uh, hyderabad who was my pg student her md thesis was on that people uh, dr prabachandra dr santosh chaturvedi and quite a few people have done quite a bit of work almost akin to that vaginal discharge unless it is too much painful irritating or uh, itching and the smell and other related aspects it should be treated one of the important point is actually in fact in case of man we talk about erection in case of woman we talk about swelling and lubricatory response unless a woman produces that particular discharge that is one of the good indicator whether arousal is present or not present so people lack information related to this which they interpret in so many ways just like tubectomy just like so many other such as things this is one of the area where lot of prevalent myths and misconceptions are present that need to be corrected then dr bhavesh wants to ask Uh, what is the role of testosterone in management of female sexual arousal hypoid in fact this is one of the area but how somebody uses it how much he uses it for how long he uses it it all depends on um, depend on many factors 
when we are trying to talk about hormone replacement therapy in case of women primarily we are trying to talk about uh, estrogen only what is actually missing menopause replacement of it but there are when we are trying to talk about libido when we are trying to talk about uh, uh, that particular uh, uh, that arousal and all uh, where significantly absent where as dr superna madam was talking about desire and other related areas problem is present androgens have been found to be extremely useful one of the very easy way to administer is actually dha dihydroxy ethylamine this is actually the parent hormone for all practical purposes uh, it serves the purpose available as 50 mg and uh, uh, almost 100 mg and uh, one of the very very easy way to use this particular thing but as far as the testosterone as such as we use in case of uh, male hypogonadism and all like that it has a little controversial aspects not because of many things like side effects which many women don't like it the third one a proper <coughs> endocrinologist and under his care giving it actually is one of the very important necessity so having a proper team and uh, people have tried androgens extremely useful way in case of women and the reports are available at that yeah, jayjit wants to ask uh, uh, ladies with sexual trauma how does it, uh, how much does it affect the future desires and behavior extremely well documented in fact as i was trying to tell when we talk about uh, female sexual dysfunctions our pgs they will collect only sexual trauma related to this only not because of anything but it has been highlighted so much in the literature what is actually the practical situation many of the women actually carry this particular idea that i have been uh, exploited i have been traumatized i have been uh, used and i have been uh, objectified and i have been uh, this thing for much much longer time working on that particular area is extremely important in uh, therapy in fact when we are trying to talk about female dysfunctions primarily in fact the relationship problem comes not because of anything but because some trauma like that sometime in the past it was thought that it is not a very serious issue in our country but it is extremely common problem and one has to work on that and uh, see that how best can one can be brought out of that particular sir so role of pd5 inhibitor what is the right way to use in female sexual dysfunction see one uh, i'll tell you when sildenafil initial trial we were trying to do once we had given this uh, experimental uh, tablet to a man he went home and uh, was supposed to have used his wife and suddenly she got excited came hugged and lot of other things he was uh, trying to tell these are all purely dramatic and such other uh, aspects only but you can imagine it is a swelling and lubricatory response and a vascular phenomenon and what precisely happens in case of man same thing is happening in case of female also that means pd5 inhibitors can increase the vascularity of clitoris <coughs> and which can be one of the increased sensitivity because of which either you are talking about masturbation or the intercourse situation both can get benefited the point here is actually how much to one should uh, use it in fact the dose what actually we advise about in case of man is equally applicable even in case of uh, females also more important uh, thing is say for example in case of man we say if he takes a tablet and sleeps maximum is going to get so stimulation is necessary so either used for masturbation for intercourse then only the actual 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 action of pd5 inhibitor stops starts so this is necessary this has to be advised for example if somebody is using uh, sildenafil maybe about uh, 30 minutes or tadalafil and all maybe much longer time that may be necessary but all carry the same implication that it actually increases the vascularity and sensitivity of the vagina and the genitals the last question from the chat box any thoughts on hypersexuality in female borderline personality patients from navina see the point is any woman hypersexual inverted comma in fact we have not defined exactly what is hypersexuality in case of man and very very true as far as women are concerned many of the times when people are talking about hypersexuality it is actually not hypersexuality <clears throat> a woman talking to a partner uh, maybe a little more uh, romantic man thinks she is actually interested in sex she is hypersexual do something in fact his own weaknesses actually may imply on that particular take it for granted uh, in nymphomania and lot many other systemologies are there 
and whole lot of uh, literature is available novels are there movies are there on this particular area if it is present possibility of a strong some primary other cause that means this is secondary that should be kept in mind and this is what actually the whole implications related to the dsm system classifications what it means is if hypersexuality present take this particular problem to some other section not at this particular sexual dysfunction area so this could be related to hypomania this could be related to personality related problems this could be related to anything else and that particular area need to be treated thank you so much sir i think dr tofan pati sir has been able to log in sir sir uh, any uh, comments from your side uh, i am very much thankful to dr tss rao and dr pela as well as dr parker for obliging Ladies, that is a great yes. opportunity what you have provided for us, and we are more than grateful to you. And actually, Dr. Rao and me, we should have we would have logged in from uh, Kolkata from Tishar, but some personal preoccupation made me rush back home. I am now in Bhubaneswar, hmm. back home. Uh, but one uh, I to for the last part of the lecture as well as the discussion in total, as the site landed, I logged in. But I was not allowed to speak. Uh, you so saying that uh, hypersexuality in men and women are disputed, right? Sure. But anything where we find a hyperfunction can have a hyperfunction. Maybe we do not know the number, but if we are so, we can tell about hyperfunction. Eat female or male, no discrimination. There can be also hyperfunction and hypersexuality in men. The last question that was asked by Dr. Lee, what about hypersexuality in men and men and women in particular? Uh, well, the bio has explained, Dr. Rao, and this is my question along with compliments. Um, I, I, I didn't catch anything in particular. I need to answer. Uh, yeah. I. My comment and your comment that hypersexuality has not been defined hmm. either in male and female. See the, the point is uh, hypersexuality as a terminology or a sexual addiction disorder. The other one very commonly used in the case of a male. These concepts are still very vague and fluid. In fact, we are still not sure when actually to consider something as hypersexual, when actually something can be treated as a world. Addiction and all of that. In fact, uh, still there are a lot of uh, areas where uh, it is very vague. This is one of the reasons why we try to avoid this particular terminology. If it is a symptom, do uh, try to understand that there is any other cause for this particular aspect and try to treat it accordingly. This rule applies both for men and in case of women, particularly so as far as women are concerned. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I think we have taken more time than we allotted to you. We are past nine thirty, and thanks to your stamina. Any, yeah. any. So, uh, how many people? Uh, almost two. Uh, almost nearing three hundred people were there actually. That whole. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. So actually, three fifty logged in. Yeah, three fifty logged in, and we had a peak audience retention around two ninety eight. <laughs> so, it speaks of your popularity, sir. Any, any closing comments from the chairpersons before we finally wind up the session? I have two things to add to Dr. Rao's lecture. This is only an addition to what he said. One is why a male psychiatrist cannot examine a woman when male gynecologist can do that. If you are competent enough, you can do it, sir. There is no nothing that should stop you. And second, there is a syndrome of excessive vaginal discharge, which is called a paradox, where a woman behaves hypersexual expression. She has excessive lubrication so as to reject the penile insertion. The excessive lubrication is to such an extent that the penis cannot enter or retain inside. I just wanted to add these two things. So thank you very much. It was very well taken. Thank you so much, ma'am. Shubhangi, ma'am, any comments from your side? 
Ma'am, you have to unmute yourself. Excellent lecture. Very nicely handled. Absolute with a great poise, which should be with this particular uh, topic. And I, I want to thank uh, Dr. Tofan Pati, Ali, um, Amrit. I think it's a nice program. And we uh, every time we listen to it, we get enriched with uh, experience and knowledge. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, Suparna, ma'am. Shubhangi, ma'am. Thank you, Ali. Thank you, Aleem. It was a pleasure having Dr. both of you Mati, as. Yeah. Amrit Thank Pata you, Madhya Joshi, and everybody. <laughs> it was a pleasure having you here. So, Fanpati sir, thank you. Despite uh, joining, despite some emergencies, giving your time, and uh, TSS Raw, what to uh, say about you, sir? <laughs> you have broken a few rock records again. <laughs> So uh, thank you for agreeing uh, on a short notice. Thank you for a uh, good overview of the topic. I think you have stimulated many people to think. Many people want to connect with you. So if anyone uh, 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 wants to connect with sir, he can directly, he or she can go to the internet, search uh, Dr. TSS Rao, and you can directly get in contact with him. I am sure he will answer to your queries on the online format also. So uh, thank you all the audience, despite this uh, busy schedule, a flurry of webinars, we had three around 350 logins and nearly 300 retention of peak attendance. So that speaks a lot about the interest in the topic and the speaker. So thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Tufan sir, thank you so much. Amrit, he had to uh, just log out because of some issues. Uh, sir, Tufan, sir, if you allow, we can now close uh, the session. We just uh, thank on behalf of IPS Odisha State Branch. Uh, yes, and uh, on behalf of IPS Odisha State Branch, I thank the speaker, the chairpersons and all the audience.